It is a beautiful day that the Lord has made for us, and we are glad that you've chosen to watch the starting point. Well, today on this program, I'm going to be teaching on relationships, and many of us, as we are learning about how to rebuild our lives from the ashes, we do not know that people play a critical role in making us survive the difficult times in our lives. So I hope and pray that you're going to listen to the program, and I'll be right here at the end to pray with you and to pray for you that your relationships will benefit and grow you and bring you to a place of purpose. God bless you. You just go and ask the diary of your CEO. Even if he loves the organization, he cannot be coming and saying hi to everybody in the office. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, so that you feel loved. So we have got to allow ourselves to grow and to allow people to come in and fill spaces that we used to occupy. Am I talking to somebody here? So let me get into the teaching of the day. I've got 15 minutes. Then I can talk to you. Genesis chapter number 12. In Galatians chapter number 6, if you want to be able to rebuild your life from the ashes, it matters whom you are connecting yourself with. Relationships are avenues that can help your life propel faster. Two are better than one. Always believe that. No matter how good you are, two are better than one. No matter how intelligent you are, get somebody else. You will wonder how your life will be easier. Get somebody who qualities are Google. They know things. Anajua mnezongia politics, mnezongia economics, mnezongia religion, mnezongia education. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. He moves on to say, verse number two, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse three. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse you and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Go back to verse number one. And the Lord had said to who? So up verse, go back to verse number one. Now the Lord had said to who? Abraham. The Lord had said to who? Abraham. Go to verse number four. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And that word says there, and who? And Lot went with him. The first thing you must know is that what you're going to see happening into the life of Lot it is not what he was spoken to him. So the first thing we are seeing here is that the Lord never spoke to Lot, number one. Number two, the Lord never blessed Lot. Hello. Number three, the Lord never told him that he will show him, reveal himself to Lot. So Lot here, he is blind to all these things that the Lord has spoken to Abraham. When you get to Genesis chapter number 13, put Genesis chapter number 13. Are you learning something? Yes, sir. Are you blessed already? And Abraham went out of Egypt and he and his wife and all that he had and Lot went with him. God is not speaking to Lot. Look at verse number 2, 3. We'll go up to verse number 5 and you're going to see some things here. And Abraham was what? Very rich in cattle, silver, and in gold. So one of the ways we know how rich you are is in your cattle, silver, and gold. So, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I desire some cattle as much as I have silver and gold. So, that's just off the cuff. Eh? The blessing brought cattle, silver and gold. So, this place, Ukitoka Inje, bring your cattle, whether ni fresh here, ni dilete hapa, we'll take care of it. But verse number four, it says that, and to the place on the altar which he had made there at the first, and there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Verse five, look at this. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. That is to tell you that also Lot, by virtue of association, by virtue of relationship, he entered into what Abraham entered into. Am I talking to somebody here? And so some of us, you are trying to become a genius, but just go and work with genius. Hello? Maybe you, you can be a very good person if you partner with an entrepreneur so that one has a mimi kitu ninayo mungu alinipea ni migu. I can walk 10 kilometers without water. Mwambi yondo capital nimeleta kwa hii partnership yetu. There is no need for you to try to think about what somebody else already has. So when you get that, it says, and Lot also went with him. 
And so we are seeing Lot enjoying something that he never heard from God. He was never blessed by God. And he was never even spoken to by God. But by just virtue of associating with Abraham, he begins to enjoy things that were not meant for him. I've always told you the Apple story of the third guy who was part of Apple who decided to sell off his shares because the company was small. He felt Steve Jobs was too assertive, too commanding, too domineering, and he figured, I don't want to go into work with this guy. And he sold off his company, his shares of Apple at that time, for about $90. That was about 10% of the company for about $90. Right now, that same thing that he sold for $90 10% of that company is the whole budget of Africa because Kenya is one of the performing economies in Africa and they're just doing two, two, two or so trillion dollars, shillings, sorry. And Apple as a company is worth over $750 billion and somebody just sold it away because he felt, I want to be alone and be in my own thing. There is a blessing in associating with other people. There is a blessing in one another. And what I was telling people in the morning is that the blessing comes in threefold. The first blessing is what you're calling the obedient action. The first key to the blessing in the life of Abraham was the obedient action of Abraham. The Lord said, get thee up of thy country, of thy kindred, and I will bless you. That's the first thing. It's the obedient action that began the sequence of blessing in his life. And that's the first place you can be blessed. You can be blessed by the obedient actions that you're taking. You can be blessed by that. Obedient action. When you start doing something and you begin to do it, it will begin to bring blessing in your life. The second blessing that you get from the life of Abraham is the blessing of an established name. But the truth of the matter is this. That's the blessing of the established name. I'll make your name great. And one of the things you've got to do is that you must look for a way to build your enterprise until it becomes an established name. That's the second thing. Because the Bible says a good name is to be desired than precious ointment. Names have got a way of commanding and attracting returns. So that's the second thing, the blessing of an attached and an established name. It works for you. But the third thing is the blessing of relationship. The blessings of relationship. He says, I'll bless them that bless you. There are blessings of blessing one another. I'll bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. There are blessings of relationships. How we bless one another commands God to bless us back. How we curse one another attracts curses in our lives. But you see, believers in the 21st century have been blinded by small money to think they can be blessed by a person, but they cannot be cursed by a person. Yeah? They believe that. People believe that. I, I, people can only bless me. My mom can bless me. My dad can bless me. Hello? Am I talking to somebody here? And so there is a blessing of relationships. Even in the office, the kind of relationships you are establishing in your office determine the kind of access you will have in that office. There are people who are relationship destroyers. Hello? There are people who are relationship destroyers. There are blessings we get into because of how we bless one another. The blessings of association. Hello? I may be able to pray four hours, but you may be able to think four hours. So I'll do the praying, you do the thinking. But if you can only think and not pray, and you run into your corner, and I can only pray and not think, and I run into my corner, we'll just be a bunch of fruitless people. Because the guy who is praying does not have the spiritual power to develop the courage to start what he's doing. The guy who is praying on this side has so much courage, but he has no cargo. He is a plane that has flown from here to Paris with the pilot alone. No passenger, no cargo. He's just gone and arrived, and everybody sees that, hey, I may pick up on time. But the other guy, he has the capacity to make a plane, but he doesn't have the courage to start the journey. Hello? So when the devil wanted to destroy the life of Lot, what did he do? This is what the devil does. This is what people do. Verse number 5, Genesis 13, verse number 5. See the problems of going ahead of the pastor? You land into scripture problems. You're wondering now where is Genesis? You're sweating. Your wife is wondering why have you done that to the church? The Holy Spirit is grieved. <laughs> How oh, you have even put your wife interceding for you, Bwana Gilba? <laughs> so Mrs. Gilbert is wondering, oh my goodness, the Holy Spirit is so grieved. No, I don't worry, it's okay. Put verse number six and seven, because we want to go. Verse number six, 
to verse 7. And the land was not able to bear them that they may dwell together, for, they were, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. The first thing the enemy begins to do to destroy relationships is when he brings substance between us. Materialism. When people begin to be obsessed by how they, they begin to invest in materialism because that influences how they are received. You see, I respect people, but the only person so that are people who look down on other people just because they bought a new shoe. And they begin to wonder, unavangaje mtumba? When people begin to allow materialism, this is the first thing that happens. The substance amongst us, when God begins to bless people in this church, the substance that God brings into our lives should not be a cause for us to part. Hello? I have seen people, husbands who got blessed and divorced to their wives. Yeah? Substance. What we call mammonism. You are being controlled by the God of money. He begins to direct where you go, who your friends are. Everything is about money. Ah, me, he, everything. Every person in your life, we look at them, we can only see one quality, how much money they make. The only people you speak honorably of are people with more money than you. Ah, you honor. When you're in the presence of people who are richer than you, your attitude changes. You become sweet. You talk softly. When you're in the presence of people whom you are richer than you, harass them. You make them feel small. You call them, Where am Stella? Kuja apa. He chai kona majani kulikwele kiwango na ekewaga. Rudisha na silipi. Call the manager. Call the manager. You harass people here. Ula kuja apo sijui. What is in here? Ahi. Hii chakule na nyuele. Na even kwako. Nani hapa kwa chakule jai kwa na nyuele. Lakini unaingia kwa hotel. I'm not eating this. Call the manager. Hii chakula hape kona. Call the manager. And that's the kind of thing. People are wondering. Materialism has begun to control you. When you meet people who do not have the same substance as you have. You are under pressure. Actually unafiligidi kama wendo pige picha. Bank account. Ukujo wenye shewe mtu kabila ulipe. Then it moves on to verse number seven, materialism, and then it begets this. And there was strife. It starts with materialism, substance. It gets into individualism, strife. The herdsmen of Lot and the Canaanite and the Perizzite that dwelt in the land. You do not know how much exposure. You are going to expose yourself when you tear yourself from one another because you are going to be driven by what you can see. What you are going to see here, verse number 8, is that Abraham said this, and this is what I've told, whether it's Pastor Mnir and every person I tell them. Verse number 8 says this, And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife. You know, in this church, one of the things I've told people is that we can tolerate. Let there be no strife. And unless we get there, unless we come to that space, as we are trusting God to enlarge our boundaries and give us better platforms, the first thing we must tell ourselves is that there should be no strife. It is when a husband reading Ebony and a woman reading Cosmopolitan come together that they create fireworks. Because this guy has been told he's an Ebony man. And that woman has been told he's a Kutua girl. And so they come together and they begin to strife with one another. Because a man be all, you know, we should all be doing something. So you're trying to make me Steve Harvey. Maybe Steve Harvey goes shopping with the wife. I don't. Those big things you want to do, we will do them, but without strife. Hello? Are we together? Let there be no strife amongst us. Live with people knowing that this person, two are better than one. And the Bible says, and Lot departed from him. And where Lot went, he went to Sodom and Gomorrah. And in Sodom and Gomorrah, it is there. He never knew that when he walked away from Abraham, he looked and Abraham told him, you choose your side and I'll choose my side. Lot looked at the green side and he went that way. 
And that's how we find Lot. The journey of his depreciation begins there. I don't claim to be the perfect pastor, and I'm not trying to be perfect. Hello? And I'm not trying to be perfect. I have delivered myself from the pressure of being perfect. And so when the enemy wants to destroy relationships, he will either bring materialism or individualism. Somebody feeling that I is more important than we. Or somebody think mine is more important than ours. Hello? Hello? And to give you three things, how to safeguard relationships. The Bible says this, brethren, if a man is overtaken in a fault, that is to tell you every man will be overtaken by a fault. It is in human nature to be in faults. Human nature. We are wired for faults. Consistently, we will be in fault. And there, is, there are people who are enthused when they hear one of us has been caught in a fault. But the Bible says if any man is overtaken in a fault, the first principle for relationships is spirituality. This is it. If you want to safeguard relationships, the first thing is that you must be spiritual. The Bible says, if any man is overtaken by a fault, ye which are spiritual. There is nothing as dangerous as people who are not spiritual trying to address or correct somebody who is in error. When people become carnal, when people are, do not value spirituality, whenever there is a problem, even in marriage, if there is a problem in your marriage, the first thing you should ask yourself is, what is the spiritual thing that I'm supposed to do? If you do not ask yourself what is your spiritual responsibility, what will happen is that you will try to deal with that person the way Mama Kayai alikuwa nadinojuan kwa vyoja makamani. And you will try to duplicate the world. The first rule of any relationship is that you must be spiritual. Because people are spiritual. Marriage is spiritual. Relationships are spiritual. When the enemy wants to destroy the purpose of God in the earth, he destroys relationships. He comes and deceives the woman so that the woman can deceive the husband so that he can get the power. Whenever there is strife, we take power from whom God has given power and we give it to the devil. Let those who are spiritual, the first thing you must ask yourself is where are the spiritual? The reason why churches are struggling is because the people who are trying to lead the church are not spiritual. The woman at the well in John chapter 4 knew Jesus by conversation. Peter knew Jesus by revelation. He came and Jesus asked, whom do men say that I am? And he said, some say you are this, some say you are this, but I say you are the son of God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. He knew him by revelation. But there was a soldier who knew Jesus by injury. It is when that soldier took the spear and he ran it on the side of Jesus, that's when he said, surely this is the son of God. Let me tell you something. You do not have to run a spear through somebody for you to know that this was a blessing in your life. There are people who, by the time they've hit me hard, and God brings me out, and then it hits them, my God, this was a servant of God. And then it dawns on them, I can't humble myself. My pride tells me, don't humble myself. If you humble yourself, people will think you are wrong, and now you're a big guy. And the other person thinks, by the time we know who you are, we will hurt you too much. You do not need to injure anybody for you to know them. By the time you discover that your husband loved you is when you've ran a spear through him just because he didn't bring you flowers on 14th. The man works. He walks. He is faithful. There are attributes he has that flowers cannot replace them. Not to be little flowers. But just to tell you, it is very easy for you to fight and run spears into people's hearts just because you are demanding something that you did not get. Let those who are spiritual. That's the first thing. If I look at elders with spiritual eyes, I'll discover there's a role that they carry. But the enemy will want to bring division. He will come to a home and bring division. Because you are not spiritual, you will always be captive to what the devil plans for that organization. Let those who are spiritual, first of all. First thing is that, let those who are spiritual restore such a one. So the first job of any spiritual work is restoring people. Restoring relationships. Strengthening relationships, building relationships. Let those who are spiritual restore such a person. If you are sitting in this church, we want to tell you, we love you. We appreciate you. We, we value the fact that you've chosen to worship with us every Sunday. And every time we want you to know you are in a safe space. With us, you are safe. Hello? When you come to us, 
you are safe. Yeah. Hello? 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 Come on. Come on. You don't need to run away from church. Don't run away. I am here for you. Come on. We are here to correct those of us who are at fault. It says the first rule of relationship is what? Spirituality. The second role of relationship is this. The spirit of meekness. Many a times, if we want to build relationships, we must walk in the spirit of meekness amongst ourselves. The worst thing that happens to us is that we think we are better than the other person. We always carry ourselves. In the spirit of meekness. The spirit of meekness. Always trying to show the other people, you are more valuable than I am. Your distraction will hinder the purpose of God than my distraction. I have to make you feel that you matter. That is the spirit of the house of God. The second thing you've got to learn is that if you're going to build relationships, you must walk in the spirit of meekness. Sometimes even wives struggle getting their husbands to do things because of how they started. Your spirit arrives before your words. You lose nothing by being meek in your conversation. In the spirit of meekness. Thirdly, as I finish, says, lest you also be tempted. The third thing about relationships is that you must know this. You too are vulnerable. When you begin to think you're not vulnerable, you begin to treat people like projects. You too are vulnerable. It is the man who says, I cannot be tempted, that falls on every temptation. If you are going to safeguard relationships, no, you too can be tempted. When you begin to think you cannot be tempted, then you will begin to think that you are better than everybody else. You will be thinking you are so good because you have forgotten you too can be vulnerable. Amen? Put verse number two. I'm done. Bear ye one another's burden so that you can fulfill the law of Christ. The Bible calls people burdens. Watu ni mizigo. People are baggages. Oh, I found a very good man, God-fearing, loves Jesus, loves the Bible, jobless broke. Loves Jesus, loves God, sings in the choir. But he's broke. That's the baggage that nakujanayo. Bear that baggage. Oh, I found a very serious, focused man. Doesn't love coming to church. Yendo baggage. Oh, I found a very nice sister. Oh, she's this and this and this, 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 this. But she's busy. She's too busy. She's working. People are burdens. And the more you are trying to find people who do not have burdens, the more you are not going to find a relationship that can work. Bear ye one another's burdens. When we discover your burden, some people avoid us. When we discover that you have a hot temper, some people say, well, say to me, talker. When we discover maybe right now you are broke, some people walk away from you. When we discover that you've got this issue, some people walk away from you. That's your burden. People are burdens. Look at your neighbor, as smartly dressed as they are. That's a bad day you're looking at. For the last two weeks, I've been able to share with you on how important relationships are to our lives. Some of us, we just need to swallow our pride and go back and build and reconnect with people who have been there for us in times uh, of distress or in times when we are starting our journey. And I pray that as you've learned from this sermon that you have got to fight to make relationships work. People have baggages. It doesn't matter how gifted you are, people carry baggages. And I pray that in this time and in this season of your life, you're going to be there for somebody. Bear your husband's baggage. Bear your pastor's baggage. Bear your businessman's baggage. Bear your employer's baggage. And you'll be surprised that by doing so, you will fulfill the law of Christ. God bless you. I love you. Feel free to support this program because it has been made possible by the people of Silicon Media and the partners of this particular program called The Starting Point. So feel free to support us. The numbers are on your screen on how you can support us. So God bless you. Until you meet again, I'm William Dendo. Thank you.